When it got hot in the valley, Thomas and Alfred drove their cows up to a cool green pasture in the mountains to graze. Usually, they stayed there with the cows for two months. Then they brought them down to the valley again. The work was easy enough, but, oh, it was boring. All day, the two men tended to their cows. At night, they went back to the tiny hut where they lived. They ate supper and worked in the garden and went to sleep. It was always the same. Then Thomas had an idea that changed everything. Let's make a doll the size of a man, he said. It would be fun to make, and we could put it in the garden to scare away the birds. <laughs> it should look like Harold, Alfred said. Harold was a farmer they both hated. They made the doll out of old sacks stuffed with straw. They gave it a pointy nose like Harold's and tiny eyes like his. Then they added dark hair and a twisted frown. Of course, they also gave it Harold's name. Each morning, on their way to the pasture, they tied Harold to a pole in the garden to scare away the birds. Each night, they brought him inside so that he wouldn't get ruined if it rained. When they were feeling playful, they would talk to him. One of them might say, How are the vegetables growing today, Harold? Then the other, making believe he was Harold, would answer in a crazy voice, very slowly. They both would laugh, but not Harold. Whenever something went wrong, they took it out on Harold. They would curse at him, even kick him or punch him. Sometimes one of them would take the food they were eating, which they both were sick of, and smear it all on the doll's face. How do you like that stew, Harold? He would ask. Well, you'd better eat it, or else. Then the two men would howl with laughter. One night, after Thomas had wiped Harold's face with food, Harold grunted. Did you hear that? Alfred asked. It was Harold, Thomas said. I was watching him when it happened. I can't believe it. How could he grunt? Alfred asked. He's just a sack of straw. It's not possible. Let's throw him in the fire, said Thomas, and that will be that. Uh, let's not do anything stupid, said Alfred. We don't know what's going on. When we move the cows down, we'll, we'll leave him behind. For now, let's just keep an eye on him. So they left Harold sitting in a corner of the hut. They didn't talk to him or take him outside anymore. Now and then the doll grunted, but that was all. After a few days... They decided there was nothing to be afraid of. Maybe a mouse or some insect had gotten inside Harold and were making those sounds. So Thomas and Alfred went back to their old ways. Each morning they put Harold out in the garden, and each night they brought him back into the hut. When they felt playful, they joked with him. And when they felt mean, well, they treated him as badly as ever. Then, one night, Alfred noticed something that frightened him. Harold is, is growing, he said. I was thinking the same thing, Thomas said. M maybe it's just our imagination, Alfred replied. We've been up here on this mountain too long. The next morning, while they were eating, Harold stood up and walked out of the hut. He climbed up on the roof and trotted back and forth, like a horse on its hind legs. All day and all night long, he trotted like that. In the morning, Harold climbed down and stood in a far corner of the pasture. The men had no idea what he would do next. They were afraid. They decided to take the cows down into the valley that same day. When they left, Harold was nowhere in sight. They felt as if they had escaped a great danger and began joking and singing. But when they had gone only a mile or two, they realized they had forgotten to bring the milking stools. Neither one wanted to go back for them but the stools would cost a lot to replace. There really is nothing to be afraid of, they told one another. After all, what could a doll do? They drew straws to see which one would go back. It was Thomas. I'll catch up with you, he said, and Alfred walked on toward the valley. When Alfred came to a rise in the path, he looked back for Thomas. He didn't see him anywhere, but he did see Harold. The doll was on the roof of the hut again. As Alfred watched, Harold kneeled and stretched out a bloody skin to dry in the sun. The end. 
Hey everyone! Thank you for stopping by my channel and taking a listen. Today's story was Harold. In the Scary Stories 3, more tales to chill your bones. Collected from folklore and retold by Alvin Schwartz. This story chilled me to the bone. The first time I read it, the second time, third, fourth. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've read this story over the years and still having the books to this day, considering I have been reading these books since I was a child and I am no longer, <laughs> um, I can tell you it still scares me just as bad as it did the first time I read it. Just to imagine that situation and I just can't, it's, it's freaky. And in the movie, the film ad adaptation, um, I don't know, I felt like this story wouldn't have worked in the film, but at the same time, it kind of took away from what made Harold so scary. But I don't know, I feel like if you watch the movie and you just kind of pretend you haven't read the story, um, they did really good with him. I thought they made him look brilliant, um, very scary. Uh, and then what they did with him and, and, and the, the scene where, well, you, if you know, you know, <laughs> um, where things go down, uh, it, it's pretty terrifying. I, th I think that, that they did really well with it. So, um, I'm proud that they took my favorite story from the book and, and did something with it. So it was fun to see. Have you, any of you guys seen the scary stories to tell in the, in the dark movie? I actually loved it. <laughs> um. But that's, you know, to each their own. I know not everybody felt that way, but I really love and appreciate the books and all the stories, and especially the artwork or drawings by Stephen Gamble. He's amazing. He, his drawings are really what makes these books. But this story, on its own, without the drawings, I just, oof, it's scary on its own. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want more, let me know in the comments below. This is just something fun extra to add to my channel. I'm a voice actor, I'm still pretty new to it all, um, but any chance to get down into my sound room and just record something is just really fun for me and it's, I don't know, it's just something I really enjoy, so uh, even if it's just for my YouTube channel, <laughs> uh, I want to keep having reasons to get down here and, and record some audio, so if there's other stories or if you have any personal stories like scary stories, things that have happened to you, or stories in general that you just really enjoy, not necessarily scary stories to tell in the dark, um, and you would like me to read them, <laughs> um, I would love to, uh, as long as you don't mind me putting it on my channel. <laughs> uh, so just let me know. Anyway, again, thank you for stopping by. Be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the little bell to uh, be reminded anytime I post any new videos. Uh, they will always be horror and Halloween and or <laughs> Halloween uh, related. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna try and do at least one scary story of some sort uh, every week just to kind of you know, switch it up a little bit. So um, if you enjoyed this, please come back because there will be more. Please check out my other stories. So far I have a few true stories um, that were given to me and I told for them. Uh, and also I have read The Black Dog from the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark books. Um, so please check those out. Um, otherwise I have a lot of other types of videos um, if you're into those as well. So. Anyway, alright, I will stop rambling. Thanks again. I really appreciate your support. Please come back and see or hear me. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time.